Hello everyone, this is Marcel with Cybergate Studio. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about elementary OS. So they're going to continue the Linux series a little bit. Uh, this time it's not going to be such a boring tutorial necessarily, but Linux, this this version of Linux, um, what it's good for, kind of like, you know, as far as what the aim is or the, the goal of, that the developers had. Um, and then just kind of show it around, uh, just kind of a quick showing of this. So I installed this on a virtual machine. Um, so forgive uh, if there are any unusual errors. Um, I'll try to comment. If I see an error, I'll try to comment on whether or not it might be virtual machine related um, or otherwise. But for the most part, let's dig in. So this is the, uh, I guess what you've been seeing this whole time is the uh, starting screen. This is kind of like the, the lock screen. Um, I went ahead and named it L Ella test. Uh, and let's go ahead and just put in a password here. And see how pretty that is. Just it's got the, your background all the way through. It's but this OS. This is elementary OS. Um, I'll put the link to their website in the description. I think they are crowdfunded right now. Uh, what their goal is is to really they're taking aim at the consumer operating system. So Windows, uh, more specifically, Mac OS, um, they're definitely taking aim at them. Now, when I click around on the on the uh, background, it's this is designed to be clean and beautiful. It's not, you know, it's right out of the box, you know, you're not going to highlight things and stuff. Personally, I'm kind of, I don't know, it's one of my little ticks. I like to sit there and just highlight, but, you know, that's just me. So, uh, some interesting things here they've got you know notifications up here which um, I had already logged in once so it had popped up to show me that um, the App Center had 14 uh, apps that need to be updated uh, you can have guest logins it's just your power options and stuff you know your networking um, oh here we go so if you click and then you hover over it'll just move over like that it's kind of cool um, and you have your volume and it, it has quick links kind of uh, you know set to settings so uh, each time you can see the different settings I think that's really great I love I don't like it when you, uh, OS developers are hiding their settings out of the way um, I like to have that front and center so I can you know tweak the things that I want to tweak um, if you click on your uh, so the calendar up here it's really pretty really nice and clean but if you click on it, it's functional it's not just gonna sit there and tell you the time but you can look at it and see the date and the calendar and then go again into settings if you want um, I even be able to zoom out further this this is my first time playing with it nope it's always just like that okay so that's pretty cool uh, come up here to applications and you have this almost uh, well, you have a list of applications, which is kind of cool. And you can come up here and see a bit more of the GNOME style, um, I guess, organization, if that's what you're comfortable with, which is cool. Uh, you also have this dock down here. So you have like system settings and it bounces just like it would in uh, Mac OS. And this should look familiar if you're into Linux or Mac. And so this. It's got all your settings here. You can come through, check out your applications. It shows your defaults, uh, what things you want to start up. So you can go ahead and say, please start up. I wonder if you can start terminal. Oh, wait. Terminal. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see what happens if I do that. Well, I guess you can just retoggle it. Cool. So edit some settings in here and it's, it's got a lot of just those traditional settings um, it looks like you do have some online accounts uh, for mail and stuff um, it doesn't have the standard because I mean part of the reason people go to Linux is to get off those um, I guess highly visible or tracked uh, commercial products so yep you got all this that's cool. I'm not going to bore you too much with all these different details. It's a virtual machine, so power settings and stuff aren't really going to do anything. Um, yeah, so great. Um, you have things like the Photos app, which I don't, I guess I don't really know what it's going to do when, by default. There we go. So it's a little slow. Like I said, this is a 
virtual machine I did not give it very many resources so um, you know get, get it, it will take some time to load up but otherwise this is a very snappy very quick uh, uh, user interface and experience you got you know import from folder you got preferences so this is this is looks very oh okay so you can pull in from your different uh, online accounts and that's pretty cool you can establish plugins and I'm sure there's a lot of content to be able to or a lot of uh, you know third-party customization options to make this very much like iCloud and you know how the iPhotos or whatever you call that app for Apple. Um, just continuing through, you have multitasking view, so you can click on that, and when this VM loads it, okay, so now you have different desktop environments. That's fantastic. That's kind of, in my opinion, a staple of Linux. I, I've been using that since, well, I don't remember what version of Ubuntu had it a long time ago. Um, something I'm familiar with I always think of Linux when I see those um, okay so just your calendars that's great you know you just, you, you just have your typical a lot of Mac uh, I don't want to say copies but you know it's supposed to kind of mimic it a little bit um, kind of give make you feel at home so comment below let me know what you think so far of this uh, but also tell me are you interested in a video where like are, are really are you interested in um, this environment are you interested in Linux and uh, using it as your full desktop uh, so one thing I think is interesting is that up here is still visible you can always still come up here and click on these different guys here and that if you come down I imagine you can probably set it up to where the launcher pops back up the dock um, it's a virtual machine, so every time I come down here, it's actually going to uh, off the off the screen. Oh, there you go. There's that. So it does hide it, which I think is very nice. It's like a quick select thing while you're in it, but that would really annoy me if that popped up while I was using applications. And then you have the App Store. The last thing I want to show you uh, while I'm here. I so this entire environment is uh, based off of um, Debian Linux. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Debian Linux. So the same thing that uh, Ubuntu's and, Ubuntu and Linux Mint are based off of, and so this is just kind of just a different flavor, you know. It's just a different uh, uh, look at it with some custom um, uh, skins on or custom applications that will run that makes it makes just makes you feel more familiar to. Um, it makes it feel more familiar to what you're used to. So let's come over here to Office. Uh, and it's got just it's just the just a software center the software store you got a bunch of different stuff in here you can put in here uh, let's see so if you know specifically what you're looking for you can do quick online searches for things um, if you're not sure what kind of Linux applications you should use I think my there it goes um, if you're not sure what kind of things you sh you should use you can always come up here Let's see if I can just search it real quick. So if I bring up Epiphany, the web browser, you can always search for. Oh, hello. Yep. I'm see. I'm using VNC, so it's starting this lag. I should have went ahead and done uh, watched use my other video to set up remote desktop into it. Um, so you can do things like uh, Linux application um, replacements or something I don't know but you, you mean there's a several different there you go Linux software equivalent to Lin Windows and so you can come through and be like okay Microsoft open office okay uh, Libra office um, I forget which one is it, it is in in Ubuntu that's default now but uh, if you're into word there's latex which is for those hardcore writers and stuff you might be familiar with that um, yeah so there's a bunch of really good uh, like quick in uh, TurboTax you know um, I have personally installed let's see where is it I've installed a lot of this stuff before and they're very 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 useful very interesting go ahead and uh, look at all this stuff so that's kind of the fun part about Linux is you can just go ahead and look at all this stuff do some apt-get um, 
you know, install a bunch of these different softwares, try them out, uh, and it's it's light. Uh, it's usually light. Um, I'm not sure what the system requirements are for this. I guess we can look. Element. Nah, seriously. Let's just do this. Will that work? So it looks like if I have VNC for too long, it starts getting really, really uh, laggy. I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of, of the server solution I'm using. So here we go. Element. Oh, there we go. Right there. So elementary.io is the website, and um, yep, they're crowdfunding, hooray. You can just download it, it's free. Uh, you can just tell it that you don't wanna pay for anything, otherwise you can pay for yourself. Um, they ship with these very carefully, so like they're saying, it's very, these, these things are meant for you to feel more uh, at home, but it also doesn't bloat with a whole bunch of extra crap. Um, so you can put exactly what you want. You can pay whatever you want for it, including zero dollars. Um, benefit of Linux is oftentimes there's no ads and no spying, but that's not entirely s true for Ubuntu because it's backed by Canonical, and I think they do gather a little bit of usage data, um, but also I'm pretty sure you can turn that off. So, um, Okay, I'm trying to see if I can find the... Uh, let's, no, let's not do that. So you can publish in the App Center. You can create apps for this if you want. Um, let's go ahead and go to Linux. All right, here we go. Okay, so what system requirements are an Intel i3 or a dual core 64-bit processor, a gig of RAM, 15 gigs of disk space, and internet access. Um, so that's good. That's that's pretty lightweight. Uh, I can't go back too far if it's looking for an i3 dual core, um, but it can it can go back pretty far. Uh, a gig of system RAM is pretty uh, standard now. It's, you know, everything has at least that. Actually, things that usually have four gigs right now. Um, and then 15, 15 gigs of disk space is very modest, obviously. Uh, obviously, that would be like, you know, at least 15 gigs means that you would basically just have the OS as is and wouldn't be able to save much of anything. Um, so you're going to want more than that. But um, so this does support Steam, I believe. So you can do things like install um, Linux supported video games as well which is very exciting because Steam is beginning their support of Linux and that's going to help a lot in uh, kind of just the day-to-day -day enjoyment of this um, these types of operating systems so anyway the all that aside what do you think of elementary OS it is really I did not spend too much time and effort on I guess really selling it to you I just wanted to give a quick introduction to kind of its user interface just what what it looks like what it's doing here um, looks like you can oh okay so you can pull in mail from Gmail and hello uh, other such locations um, and I'm sure this will be something similar to your uh, email client on Mac or maybe even Outlook which Thunderbird is very much like Outlook so I think that would probably end up being closer to the Mac alternative uh, here's your music it's just like you know I guess they're they're trying to bring in using you know tunes and whatnot the this color scheme is trying to, I think they're probably trying to feel very much like a Mac and so now uh, in the future I'm gonna do a video about Ubuntu and maybe I might install this uh, OS um, I'll do a couple more videos about uh, just some other distros and the feel of those distros. And then comment below in those videos, and including this one, which which uh, OS would you like to see go up against the big leagues? You want? Uh, I, I intend to um, do in a pretty extensive video on, or at least a, uh, yeah, do a video on can Windows or can Linux replace your Windows computer? your Windows operating system. Can you honestly switch to Windows and not look back? So that, uh, which which OS distribution would, you, which Linux distribution do you want to see me attempt that with? Um, I don't have my MacBook Pro anymore, so I don't have um, 
I have some footage of using the OS, of using Mac OS, but I don't have uh, just a computer running that currently to be able to just take new footage and compare um, directly side by side, like in person. So um, I, my Mac OS video might be a little on the anemic side um, as far as what you can do, because I, you know, I didn't test things like customization and stuff, and you can use Conky and whatnot to customize a lot of these OSs. So there are a lot of Linux. So um, that's going to be something that if you're interested, let me know what you're interested in. Um, this probably is a better direct comparison to Mac, but I want to do my Windows one first. Um, so let me know what you think. If you want to see this one put up against Windows, if you want to see uh, Ubuntu or Linux Mint, um, you know, give it give it a few, maybe a, a month or so after I've done all these videos, and um, comment below on which. OS you want to see go up against Windows. Um, please like the video if you like the series and uh, subscribe for more content coming your way.